Hey y'all, in today's episode, we have a 29-year-old female calling in anonymously from Los Angeles. So, okay, caller, can you please tell me a time, about a time when things got weird for you or just you didn't understand what happened with the situation? Yes, I can. Um, it would be a hinge date that I went on a few weeks ago. Um, and the guy was, you know, not... He was my type on paper. The only thing that made me hesitant at first was his height. I usually go with taller guys, at least 5'10". He was at 5'8". I yeah. was like, you know, I go ahead and give the short king a chance because everything else... <laughs> short king. Look at him, look like he was in shape. Yeah, short king. Um, so I wanted to meet up with him he, when he asked what I was up to um, that weekend, but he was unable to uh come and meet up with me that same day so mm -hmm. that same day that we were messaging mm -hmm. we were going to meet up for drinks and i told him i was busy with work and that i try to finish in time and i get back to him and then later on that he was like oh it's fine um i'm just going to be here chilling so just let me know when you get done i'm like great so once I finished up as much work as I could do, I reached back out to him like, hey, like I'm getting ready now. I should be there in about 30 minutes. We could, um, you know, I'm excited to meet you. Whoop -de -whoop. And he comes back like, oh, never mind. Let's just meet tomorrow. So that was like a little irritating because I thought that, you know, I had already suggested that we meet up tomorrow yeah. because I was working and I was trying to be flexible. So, so I, I want to keep a tally of how many times I tried to be flexible. Exactly. So that's, right. To me, that's one. And when he changed his so mind. Like, it's two because he's short. It's two. So it's <laughs> my second time being flexible. Look, as you, far as you like what you like. Exactly. So you're, you're right. That is your second time being flexible. So, and like when you got ready the first time, or like when you were about to go out, were you, were you already ready or you were just telling him, yeah, I'm, you know, done with work. Uh, I was already pretty much ready. Like by the time I got the message, well, by the time I texted him, like, "Hey, I'm getting, I'm getting ready now. I can see you in 30 minutes." Uh. I had already started getting dressed. It doesn't take me that long. And so by the time, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes after that, I was dressed and I checked my phone, and he pretty much canceled and tried uh. to reschedule for the next day. I actually went up, went out anyway. And took myself out to eat because I was already dressed. Good. Yeah. I just hate that. Girls hate to waste makeup, y'all. But okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Um, I wasn't going to let that uh, spoil my night and just stay home and just take take off everything. That didn't seem right. So oh, no. I went out anyway. So fast forward. It's the next day. And um, he at first we were making plans for him to come out towards um, my neighborhood. He lives about... 40, usually it's about 45 minutes and I live in LA. So, you know, traffic's a thing here. It's not a secret. Um, it's 45 minutes um, distance wise going towards um, where he lives on his side of town. And um, he asked if I could come and meet him on his side of town instead that should have been so, your third strike right there because as a female, we been. should not have to go towards the male on the first date, but okay. Here, here was his reasoning for it. Here, here's his reasoning was that he had spent, he was there earlier that day on my side of town um, and was getting a haircut and, and ended up having um, uh, back issues because he hit a couple speed bumps or something like that. I didn't really press for more answer, but for more of a of explanation. Okay. Okay. Um, and so I'm just going to mark that as the third time I was flexible because I still went and took myself over to his side of town anyway. Okay. That night. Okay. Um, so I, I get there. He's late. <laughs> and um, and when I say late, he's about a solid, I want to say 10, 10 minutes late, maybe 15. Okay. Oh, so uh, and mind you, I was in the car for about five minutes. Uh, um when I first got there, so I got there right on time. Right. And I stayed in the car for about five minutes um, after texting him that I was in the parking lot. I didn't hear from him um, immediately. Like, he didn't text me back right. immediately. So I was like, well, maybe he's in the restaurant getting the table or something. Let me just go ahead and, and walk in. So I walk in. I don't see him by the bar. So I'm just sitting in the in the restaurant lobby. And I thought about, well, maybe should I put in for a table? I was like, you know what? You may want to sit at the bar. So let me just wait for him to come. Right. Um, 
so from then it was like 10 minutes and then he finally walks up okay so, he, so he's there um and we ended up it one i didn't think he was that well dressed enough for a date a first date what was date. he dressed like uh, he had on a hoodie and and uh, a t-shirt. So he had on a t-shirt, graphic tee, a a hoodie jacket, and and some blue jeans. I and and, and in contrast, I'm wearing a cute blouse, like sweater. I have um, dark skinny jeans and black um, uh, knee high boots. Okay, so y'all's vibes, just, y'all's vibes wasn't matching. You just felt like that he wasn't trying to impress you at all. <laughs> no. No, no, he was not. <laughs> so that, so that, that was, it seems a little lazy. Yeah. To me. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's how it came off. And, but I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Like I said, really, this entire story. And, um, we're, we're having some pretty good banter at the table. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, you know, conversating. The, the conversation is flowing enough where I'm starting to feel comfortable. Um, and we seem to be getting along well enough where when he suggested, oh, let's um, head over to um, this spot, there's a really cool bar mm-hmm. and like the night nightlife town, the, the nightlife side of town where he lives. And I'm unfamiliar with this side of town. I think I've been there a couple times, but I haven't n- never really like took time to go out over there. Okay. Um, and so I obliged and we left my car in the parking lot and we drove, I think, less than a block. Uh, now, before we get into his car, he goes to the back of his car, and he all I hear is like Delfro's, like Delfro, and I'm like, what is he doing? He comes around, and this dude got a full neck brace on and a back brace, <gasps> and so a back in the car, yeah, a neck and brace and a back brace. It made sense as to why he didn't want to drive out, and and on on top of that. He was driving about, it felt like he was driving five miles, 10 miles an hour. Oh like how gosh. slow we were going on the road. But at the, at the, like, be- at the mm-hmm. beginning of the story, you said he got that because of potholes? No. So his reasoning, when I asked him, how did he get those injuries? Yeah. Homeboy said that he had gotten into a few accidents where cars ran, like they ran into him. He got hit from behind. Oh, yeah. Um, a, a few times. And he said he had been in, I think, three to four car accidents in the past two months. I almost want to say a month, but I don't want to over-exaggerate. But enough where it caused me to question me being in his car and his uh, capability to drive. Right. Oh, my gosh. That is weird. But, okay, go ahead. Yeah, or, or maybe the douche is really unlucky. I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of both. So that's yes, what's girl. going in my going through my head. But this this man is driving so slow on the road. I'm sure, like I, I highly doubt we're about to get into any type of accident. I was, I've been I've been really optimistic this entire date. Okay. His journey. Um. So we get to we get to the 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 bar nightlife scene, and there's only one place that's open, and the place that he wanted to take me to that was next door was closed. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason. Um, every other place that he wanted to take me to that was less than like a block away uh, from each other, they all were closed except this one club. And then by the, and by the time we made our way over to that club, um, they were closed. They're at full capacity. And they explained because everywhere else was closed, everyone came here, we're at full capacity, and we're about to close in the next 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And even he did try to, you know, talk to bouncer and let us in anyway. I think he even tried to bribe him too. So I give him that that he really was trying to, you know, he was he was giving some effort on trying to get us in there. Right. But it did not did not work. And then he suggested that we head over to um this hotel so at so he gets free hotel rooms um at this hotel that's also just next to the parking lot okay that um, where we parked and um i turned him down because i didn't want to um one sleep over anywhere and have to drive home i had work the next day right and then two i just didn't feel comfortable being in that type of environment with someone i'm not comfortable with like that absolutely yeah Um, it'd be it'd be different if i was you know 100 percent into him i just met him i was at like a cool 70 70 Mm, percent here um and and so i just wasn't 
in, in that mind space at all to be in that type of environment with him, even though he was like, oh, no, it'd be, it'd be cool. Like, we could just grab drinks. Um, Don't believe it. Beers. Don't believe it. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, we never, <laughs> ladies, never believe that. Just, no. Just okay. even, if he, even if he doesn't do anything, it's just like, you never know. You can never read anyone's mind. So, exactly. No, if, if not Stay planning safe. On, on dropping draws, don't. Don't go into a house with a guy. Oh, hold on. I gotta, I gotta, pa I gotta pause that. I gotta emphasize that right, right quick. If y'all did not plan on having sex, do not go into a man's space. Okay. But go ahead. Period. Thank you. Thank you for stopping um, the, the interview just for that. Um, and, and so I, I did not. And. What made me feel uncomfortable about this, because uh, we're we're back in the car now, and and he wanted to get back out to go into the hotel, and I was like, no, I, I I'm fine. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, you've been drinking, and I thought like you felt comfortable to drive. Um, back of my head, I was like, I feel comfortable enough to drive myself home, <laughs> be in the hotel with you. Yeah, yeah, um, like so. Yeah, <laughs> he's taking me to my car. But he has the nerve to get into what felt like an argument with me. That at one point I had to say. Um, when he kept asking, how, how come you, you don't want to stay? How come you don't want to go to the hotel? Why not? I actually told this man because I said so. Oh, God. But I, I oh. never had to say that to somebody. You should not have so to I, say I'm that to somebody. Explain myself. No. And, and it seemed like he was having a tantrum in the car, which is, is extremely un, unsexy. So I went from a 70% to a full 25. <laughs> 25. Uh, There's still hope. 25. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hope. But still, it's um, still it's disgusting. Like it brings you back. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, yeah, but that's still disgusting behavior. But go, go ahead, I'm listening. Agreed. And he takes me back to the car. And um, and I could tell he's probably like trying to wonder like how I'm feeling about the date because he should know that he takes it by now. Um, but I wasn't too sure like how he was going to react when he dropped me off to my car. Again, strange danger, right, ladies? Um, and so I was trying to be really nice. I, I kissed him on the cheek and I was just like, Hey, you know, um, I, I was flexible enough to come out here and meet you. So if I say that, you know, I see you another time, um, and that I just don't want to see you tonight, that should just be the end of it. It doesn't mean I don't want to see you. Cause obviously, you know, I made this much of an effort just to come out here right. and he agreed with, of course he had to agree with that. Um, and I just got into my car, waited a bit and then I drove all the way home. He proceeded to text me a few days later um, asking if I wanted to hang out again. I have not texted this man back because I have not been able to find the words to sum up the reason why I'm not interested in seeing him again because it's a multitude of things yeah. that I've pointed out throughout this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I think the only thing that I have a question about, like how things went, Mm -hmm. was that and I, I'm, I think you kind of gave me the answer in the middle of the story was that should I have just not gave this dude a chance Ooh. at one point and part of me was like maybe I should have stopped at 5'8 I'm just kidding, I'm no, kidding. No. but maybe I should have I should have stopped by by uh, the time that he made me drive out to Downey even though he did have a good reason for that but he should have reiterated on, on the reason and, and granted I didn't ask but I feel like if you're making a woman drive out that far to you, it's one thing if it's like 10 minutes away, 15 minutes away. Yeah. Um, but if you're making someone drive um, and you're supposed to be the pursuer um, more than 15 minutes out to you, I feel like you need to state like your reason mm -hmm. or excuse for that yeah. a little bit more clearly versus just being like, oh, my back hurts because I went up over a speed bump. Yeah. Okay, so what I would say about that, actually a few things, because I have noticed that there's been a few um, stories that I've gotten where there's a lot of ghosting going on. So I'm going to touch on that first so I don't forget about it. So I mentioned in one of the other videos, I was like, okay, it's not cool to ghost, you know, like, so if anything... Be, and and I and I said especially if it's been a long time because you have recently just met this guy so it's okay if you kind of slide off but 
I always say at least respond to him to be like, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. You don't have to further explain yourself. So that's where the ghosting thing come, come in. I say don't just leave a person hanging, but you don't you definitely don't have to explain yourself as to why. Just be like, I'm not interested and leave it at that. Um, that's how you would. That's how you would say in the in the text message exactly that. Yeah, I, for for me, just because I'm blunt like that. Yeah, if because he's asking you when can I see you again, I would just be like, I'm not interested. Period. <laughs> like that's it. So it's it's it doesn't have to be you know any further explanation. Even what you did on the date, because I noticed that you said you know you kissed him on the cheek and you you let him uh, you kind of explained yourself at the end of the date. Girl, you didn't even have to do all that because he was already crossing boundaries. So that's another lesson in this, y'all. Uh, in her story. It's some boundaries being crossed because this guy, you know, she had already said no and he's trying to convince her. And he, on top of that, he got aggressive. It's really difficult. You know, I'm, I'm so glad she drove herself because it's very hard for girls to get picked up um, by guys these days because of stuff like that. You never know where he's going to take you, what he's going to do in the car. That's why a lot of girls just don't want to be picked up nowadays. And I have a lot of friends that are like that. So, yeah, um, I'm, I hate that he crossed her boundaries like that. So, that's another thing. But to answer your main question, when you said about, uh, you know, uh, should you have not given him a chance? I think that is very situational because for me, I would say you shouldn't have because I, it sounds as if you know for a fact what you like. Like you sound like a woman that knows exactly what you like. So because of that, even if you would have gave this guy a chance, because um, a lot of people out there do want to give people that extra chance because you just never know. You don't want to cut something off just by being having like such rigid things. But I do believe that everybody has like a top three. And if one of your top three things is his height, then, you know, that's probably should have been the first thing that's like, no, because you're going to like it for now, but eventually you're not going to like it anymore. So I say that for, you know, if you know for a fact that, you know, he is doing X, Y, and Z and these things, these things like, like I said, his height and um him making you drive all the way there, stuff like that should have just been like, you know what? Okay, maybe I shouldn't do this, but you know, it's, I'm, it's still a date. You still got to meet him and at least see. So it's no harm in it, you know? That's true. And also, I got reintroduced to uh, a new neighborhood in Ex California. See? Exactly. Too. Yeah. New places. So yeah. it's a little experience. And even though it was, wasn't the best experience, I'm just glad that nothing bad happened to you. I'm glad that, you know, the worst that you, you know, could say is that he just was an aggressive jerk, <laughs> which he was. But yeah, it's nothing wrong with giving somebody a chance. I just feel like if you know your top values and the top things you like, then just stick with that. Because even if you give a person a chance, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. Even for you, I think you went into the date like, okay, let me see what he can prove to me because I already don't like this. And you don't ever want to go into a date like that. You want to go into a date like happy and feeling like, oh, this person is hot and just seeing where it goes, you know? That's true. Yeah. That's true. I was already like disillusioned by the time I met him. Exactly. And I think it was by it was by strike two when I had got ready to meet up with him when he said he was coming on my side of town and then just and and made it seem like, oh yeah, I'd be, you know, available all night. Just hit me up when you're done with work. And then when I am, you know, finishing work and getting ready to go, he just changes his mind and goes back to rescheduling it for the next day something i already suggested i think then because that that did bother me yeah yeah so yeah i, I feel like i was too too gracious but you're right i should have just stuck with like what hello oh i'm sorry your phone cut out a little can you hear me yeah. Okay, perfect. But yeah, I did hear uh, the very last thing you said. But yes, thank you so much for sharing that story with me. Of course. Thank you so much for letting me come on today and share. Of course. So just last message for all the ladies and gents out there. Just I feel like the overall thing to take away from this is boundaries and just know what you like because it'll really help you go into the dating field um, you know, knowing where to start. Just don't accept anything if you know you're not going to like it because there is going to be a time where you're over it and two people kind of wasted each other's time. I hate to say that, but at the end of the day, it is what it is if you know what you like up front. So thank you so much, Carla. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.